Hello, my name is Leonardo and in this presentation I'm going to show you an interesting way of testing and prototyping models using System Modeler. First I'm going to give you a short introduction, then I'm going to show you how you can interact with simulation models and then how to run standalone models. The Modelica language behind System Modeler is mainly focused on simulating big and complex dynamic systems. And the purpose of these simulations is to get a better understanding of the systems that we are designing. We can roughly summarize the design steps as follows. First, we need to create a model of the system. Once we have the model, we can start defining test scenarios. Based on those scenarios, we run simulations. And based on the simulation results, we can improve the controller or the parts of the model that we are interested on. For example, if you want to design a car, we could start with the powertrain. In such case, we create a model for the different mechanical and electrical parts. In order to test the model, we need to define driving profiles because not every person drives the same way. After running simulations for the different profiles, we can redesign the powertrain to obtain an optimized version. A very important point to consider is that the tested scenarios need to be realistic. Bad driving profiles will lead to suboptimal designs. Defining test scenarios can be difficult, especially if there is no easy way of capturing information from the real system. As an analogy, let's say that we are designing a new futuristic musical instrument. The best way of knowing if it's good is to play with it. To validate our instrument, we need an easy way of getting a prototype and test it with realistic inputs. System Modeler and the tools provided can be used for this purpose for many applications. In order to get realistic inputs for a given model, we need to create a custom interface that resembles a real system. This can be quite difficult since every system has its own inputs. In the case of the powertrain, it would be nice having a steering wheel and pedals for accelerating and braking. One simple and inexpensive way of creating a custom interface is by using an Arduino board. Arduinos can be connected to a wide variety of sensors and actuators and thanks to its large community of users, it's very easy to find information on how to connect a specific sensor. Once we have defined the components we need for a custom interface, we can use model plot library for system modeler to communicate a simulation model with the real world. Model plot allows you to use an Arduino board to read information from sensors like switches, temperature sensors, and also to control actuators like motors, relays, and most of the things that you can connect to an Arduino. Model plug is not limited to Arduino boards. It can be used to communicate with other boards supporting the Firmata protocol. Since the protocol is open source, you can even implement it in your own board and, and use it with Model plug. Here we can see System Modeler, and I have loaded the Model plug library. The first thing that I'm going to do is drag an Arduino board to my schematic and then I'm going to configure it. Let's say I want an analog input and controlling a servo. Next thing that I need to do is connecting the pins to the Arduino board and then uh, specify the pins that I'm using. Like in this case it's going to be pin 5 and for the analog input I'm going to use the pin 14. And these pin numbers depend on the board that you are using. Next thing that I need to do is set the serial port that I'm using. In, in the case of Windows computers, this is going to be something like COM something. I'm going to skip that step now. And then I can use any model of the Modelica library. For example, a filter. And directly connect it. To my model. So what's going, what's going to happen is that by the moment that I run the simulation, our simulation is going to connect to the Arduino board, it's going to configure it and it's going to start reading the value of the pin 14, sending it to the filter and then it's sending that the output signal to the servo control. Here we can see the result. The analog input is reading the slider and we are writing that signal as angle to the servo.
In the previous example, we saw a very simple way of using an Arduino board without writing a single line of code. Now I'm going to show you an example of, of interaction with simulation models. Here we have the model of a very simple vehicle with two wheels, and we have connected two analog inputs of model block to control the torque of each wheel. Now that we have the model, we can simulate it in real time and see how our system reacts. Here we can see the simulation running in real time. The two sliders are connected to the analog inputs and we can control the wheels and get instant feedback on how our system behaves. This is another example in which this way of testing is very useful. Here we have the model of a drone for which we want to design a navigation control. The model consists of four electrical motors attached to a rigid structure. And by controlling the velocity of the motors, we can control the force that lifts the drone. One of the advantages of prototyping the controller in a simulated drone is that we can crash it as many times as we, as we want, which is something that we cannot do with the real one. We can also vary parameters of the drone, like the weight, battery capacity, and the dimensions in order to test different variations. And once we have the prototype of the controller that reacts the way we expect, we can refine it with the real drone. Here we can see our drone flying. In this case, we have added a joystick to the Arduino so we can control the direction in which we want to fly. Using model plug to test the navigation control of the drone allows us to define a better strategy to react to the inputs and make the drone easier to control. When we had inappropriate values of the gains, the drone reacted very slow, and if the gains were very high, it was very easy to crash it. Using system modeler and model plug, we can create and simulate complex mechanical systems and interact with them as if they were video games. But the main difference between a video game and a model made in system modeler is that we can get detailed information about the mechanical, hydraulic, or electrical parts of our system. Like the following example, which is a mechanical simulation of the punk video game. In this case, we use two sliders to control the positions of the bars. And as you can see, in this model we had to alter some of the laws of physics because every time the ball collides, it moves faster. With the multibody library, you can easily go one step further and make a simulation of a 3D version of the Pong game, which is not as easy to control as it looks. In all the previous examples, we were using model plug to provide inputs to simulation models. We had simulated car wheels, a simulated drone, and a simulated pong. My next example is going to be a case in which we have a real hardware and we want to prototype a controller. This is a picture of a balancing robot. It consists of a metal bar that holds a ball, and the angle of a bar is controlled by a servo motor. In one of the endings of the bar, we have a sensor that can give us the position of the ball. The objective is creating a controller that, that can keep the ball in the center of the bar. This is the model in model plug. We have a servo that controls the angle of the bar. And on the other side, we have an analog input, which is going to give us the position of the ball. You can see here that we have other modelica models in order to, to calibrate and filter the, the signals. And on this side, we can give the, the desired angle of the bar. This model is, is connected to a, to a controller. So the position of the ball goes into the controller 
and the, and the angle goes into the servo. When we run the simulation in real time, the simulation connects to the Arduino board and it starts controlling the system. Here you can see what happens when, when I move the ball of the center. We can see how the controller reacts. In the video we could see that the controller is quite good at keeping the ball in the center. But I wanted to test also if the controller could keep the ball in a different position of the bar. So what I did was using a second Arduino and, and using a, an analog input to give a, a deviation to the reference. So instead of trying to keep it just in the center, I could control the location where I want the ball to stay. In this video we can see that the slider moves the reference and the controller moves the, the ball to the desired position. So far we have seen examples of simulation models using ModelPlug, but ModelPlug is not suitable for all applications. One of the limitations of ModelPlug is the amount of data that we can send and receive. Some boards can communicate faster than others. For example, the Tinsy board, which is also compatible with ModelPlug, is much faster than the Arduino Uno. The second limitation is the complexity of the model we are running. If the model is too complex, it may not be able to run in real time in your computer. The last limitation is that the Arduino board needs to be always connected to the computer in order to communicate to the simulation model. So if we stop the simulation or turn off the computer, the Arduino stops working. A good combination to run applications that require both computing power and low level timing is to use an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. The Arduino can handle the communication with sensors and reading analog signals while the Raspberry Pi can make the computational intensive calculations. This combination allows to deploy simulation models to the Raspberry Pi and use the Arduino inputs and outputs with model block. This way we can prototype and deploy a control system to a standalone unit. Now I'm going to show you an example of deploying a simulation model. This functionality is not yet available in System Modeler version 4.2 but it will be available in a future release. What we are going to do is take the server example shown before and make it run directly in the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is connected to a local IRON network through Ethernet and is running a server that will receive, compile and run the model. Here we can see the Raspberry Pi which is running the server and here is the Arduino that has connected the servo and the slider. And here is the model. The first thing that I'm going to do is to specify the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. And once it's connected to the Raspberry Pi, I can get the names of the serial ports in the Raspberry Pi. And then I can select the model and send it to the, to the Raspberry Pi. Now the Raspberry Pi has received the files, it has compiled them and now it's linking and it's ready to run. And here you can see this, the same demo. The slider defines the position of the servo. In the following example, I'm going to run the same model of the controller for the balancing robot directly in the Raspberry Pi. And here I'm following the same process. First I'm going to connect to the Raspberry Pi. Then I can request the serial ports, which 
which in this case they are two because I have two Arduinos connected then I can send the model and here we can see the Raspberry Pi which has received the files it's compiling and it's, it's running the model now I have this, the second Arduino connected with the slider and I can use it to move the reference and at this point the model is running in the Raspberry Pi so I can turn off my computer, pack my stuff and go home and keep it running the whole night In this presentation we have seen a few examples on how we can use model plug to interact with simulation models and create more realistic test scenarios. We have seen that we can use commercial components to create custom interfaces that allow us to control many different models. And finally, with the use of a Raspberry Pi we can prototype and deploy a controller that uses Modelica components without writing a single line of code. Thank you for your attention.